How to Invest in Stocks for Beginners Now I am no industry expert, just a man that runs one of the largest capital management firms on YouTube. CJ Capital Management has been providing hedge fund services to the richest of the Minecraft YouTubers over the past years, which is why I feel qualified to help out some new investors. This is not financial advice. I am just trying to show how to educate yourself before making investment decisions. Before we get started on a game plan, let's go over the basics. What is a stock? Simply put, a stock represents ownership in a company. When you buy a stock, you're buying a small piece of that company. If the company eats, you're going to eat too. If not, your position may decrease. The stock market is a risk and you should take into account exactly what you're investing in. Which brings me into the next pre-game warm-up. Make sure you educate yourself. Before you start investing, it's crucial to understand the basics. You don't need a finance degree, but familiarizing yourself with key terms and ratios can help you become such a more informed investor. Your finance ratio of the day-to-day -day is the P.E. ratio. The P.E. ratio is a measure of the current price of a stock and its earnings per share. The P.E. ratio is great when you look at the long term of a company. For larger companies, a high P.E. ratio may mean it's expensive relative to its earnings, meaning they may be overvalued and its price may fall in the future. For smaller companies, a higher P.E. ratio could be more attractive because it could indicate high expectations for future growth, especially if the company is in a rapidly expanding market. Now, I'm not expecting you to memorize a bunch of ratios, and you don't even need to know all of them to be a good investor, but the more knowledge, the better. Also, most brokerages have it shown when doing research on their platform. Speaking of brokerage platforms, you're going to have to choose a brokerage account. To buy stocks, you'll need to open a brokerage account. Think of this as your gateway to the stock market. Definitely do some research and find which company offers you the most. For beginners, Robinhood can be a great option as they don't have fees for trades. I do have a link if you want to join and we can both receive a free stock. Link is in the bio. Join Robinhood.com Carter J97. Now for the fun stuff, the actual strategy involved when investing. Now this is very dependent on many factors, like your age, goals, and what you're comfortable with. For older or more conservative people, it would be best to do your research into ETF and index funds. These are funds that contain shares of a large amount of stocks in the market, creating an extremely diversified investment without you needing to individually go and invest in all of them separately. ETFs are more industry-focused, whereas index funds contain large umbrellas of the market as a whole. Even as a younger and more risk-averse person, I still hold a large percentage of my portfolios in ETF funds, especially in cases like retirement funds, investing in index funds can be a great way to invest with less risk, as historically, the market has gained an average of 7% per year. When it comes to actually seeking out companies or stocks to invest in, there's a lot of different strategies or routes you could go. The old school method would come out of the playbook of Warren Buffett. He invested in solid companies that are consistently making money and have a moat. What is a moat? A moat is something that separates a company from others in its industry. It could be the company's size, patents, recipe, or anything that is extremely hard for a competitor to replicate. Some of Warren's most famous investments are Costco and Coca-Cola, where they both have moats with Costco's size and niche bulk store concept and Coca-Cola's size and recipe. I always tend to keep anywhere from 25-50% of my individual stock investments in companies that fit this mantra. 
Even on riskier or smaller companies, however, finding a moat could mean a solid investment, so it's always something to keep in mind. I do say that the newer school method of investing is a lot riskier, but I think that's due to the crypto and NFT stereotypes. Really what I mean is investing in more fun companies like Tesla or NVIDIA. There's a ton of these companies that bounce around while, say, Coca-Cola will steadily go up inch by inch. Investing in these companies can be cool, but there is a lot more unpredictable risk. This, to me, is where having the understanding of ratios or timelines can be essential. Looking at a company's numbers quarter by quarter or year by year can be a great indicator of what they're trending for. One tool I use that's completely free is Yahoo Finance. My dad and I joke that that's the only good thing Yahoo has made. No offense, Yahoo. Yahoo also has a ton of articles from experts on what they're looking at and what's going on in the market. The best way you can invest is to be informed before you pull the trigger. Now, just remember that if you've seen news about a stock, the stock's price has already adjusted to it. News investing can be one of the biggest gambles. Now for me, one of the biggest things I do before purchasing a stock is making sure it crosses off every line on my checklist. If even one thing is off, I won't invest. I mean, no one's forcing me to. Everyone's checklist is going to look different. But I can go over some of what I look at. First off, how is their stock been performing so far? I look to zoom out and look at the five-year or lifetime view of a stock to get the bigger picture. If it's been very level or going down mostly, then I won't bother. I know that sounds simple enough, but it's important to look at the company as a whole. The next thing I usually check is if the company is making money. Checking their most recent earnings to see if they're making money and making more than last quarter or year is super important. It sounds just as simple as the last one, but there's a lot of companies that are losing money or making less and less every year. And that's important to know. I don't want to go too far in depth on formulas and ratios since this is a beginner's video, but just know that there is a ton of data you can look at. And I will go further into it in a later video but Yahoo has a ton of year-year data that can be super helpful in looking at how a company is performing. And all you need is a simple Google of should this number be decreasing or increasing. Why don't we quickly take a look at Johnson and Johnson's historical data on Yahoo Finance. If we look at their basic numbers like EPS and net income, we can see they had a dip last year but over the past 12 months, they have been increasing in those numbers. This can indicate they are doing better and their future trends are looking positive. Free cash flow is another basic indicator that they have more money than they do in previous months, which can be an indicator they are making more money. For companies like Johnson & Johnson that pay out dividends, having a higher free cash flow could mean they will be paying more out on their dividends, which could be an indicator to buy. Now these numbers and figures I am looking at need to be taken into account with other research. Look up news about companies and see what other analysts are saying about them. The key to investing is knowledge, and a lot of times I will be reading what people with more knowledge have to say about a stock. I plan on releasing a video on dividend stocks and creating a dividend portfolio that you could eventually live off the earnings. Companies that issue out dividends could be great investments as they are essentially paying you some of their earnings. I know I bounced around quite a bit, so let me recap. When investing in stocks, it's important to build a checklist of factors you're looking for. It can be things as simple as the share price, consistently being positive, or factors like issuing dividends. But don't invest if a stock 
doesn't follow exactly what you're looking for. There are thousands of companies to invest in, so you don't need to settle. My biggest piece of advice is do your research. Whether it's breakdowns of a company's quarterly reports, articles written by industry experts, or going over their historical financial data. Having more knowledge will help you. Lastly, I just want to remind you that I am not a financial advisor, so this is not direct investment advice, and no one can predict the stock market. So if someone is telling you an exact stock to invest in, or the secret method to investing, then please take it with a grain of salt. Thanks so much for staying through the whole video. If you enjoyed or learned something, please like the video and leave a comment on something you learned or found interesting. Also, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe as I will be releasing more related videos about dividend portfolios, other finance-related content.